Alchemilla is a mod for Half-Life 2 that tries to recreate the world from the Silent Hill games, putting you in control of some poor sod tracking down Dr. Kaufman, the antagonist from the original game, blaming him for the death of his family. Dr. Kaufman shouldn't live. Instead of a fixed camera perspective, however, the mod takes place from a first-person perspective with virtually no HUD or inventory system as a means to increase the immersion. It's a great mod with a lot of polish and it's free to boot, but the real question here is, is it worth your time? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Let's just find out, shall we? I gotta get out of here. Anyone who's played the Silent Hill games knows that there's always much more going on here than meets the eye, and fair enough, near the end of the game, there is a pretty big plot twist that really shows you what's going on and who the real bad guys are. It's kind of expected, to be honest, and without sounding like a snarky prick, I really did see it coming, but it is handled fairly well, even if the voice acting is utterly atrocious. No, 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 what the hell's going on? So for a moment, let's pretend you know nothing about the Silent Hill universe. To sum it all up, Silent Hill is basically like a homing beacon for people with personal demons and more than a few skeletons in their closets. People who find themselves attracted to Silent Hill often end up in a nightmarish version of the real world, referred to in-game as the other world, where everything looks grotesque and industrial and deformed, metaphorical monsters roam around and lash out at you if you get too close to them. The monsters would be a projection of someone's fears or their darkest feelings or thoughts. Pretty sick shit. The second game in the series was one of the first proper survival games that I truly got engrossed in, and it had one of the most well-written and paced campaigns in any horror game at the time. That's not to say the first or third game weren't any good, and I'm not even going to mention the fourth game of the others, but the second game was the most unique with its monster designs, the visuals and art style, and just its amazing soundtrack. On that note, Silent Hill 2 is the game Al Camilla follows the most closely, with it being the similar story about a man searching for his family and the hints of him having a darker, sordid past. Some of the other world sections of Al Camilla use textures taken straight from areas in Silent Hill 2, as well as it featuring locations from Silent Hill 1 and 3, the shopping mall for instance, and the hospital itself. Now, it should be said that the visuals are very true to the source material, but considering almost every single texture, sound effect, and music track is ripped from the PlayStation games, that's just kind of a given. Now in terms of gameplay, this is pretty much identical to the other games, involving lots of puzzles where you read little tidbits of information that often allude to the solutions, whilst you run back and forth between rooms, taking note of certain items or features that often combine to make the answer to something. It's very old school in the way that it can be really cryptic at times, and at one point I had to stop playing to grab a notepad to start jotting down things I kept coming across. It's great in the way that it doesn't hold your hand in the slightest, and when you finally solve a really confusing puzzle, it feels quite satisfying. Most often you need to find a particular item, usually a key or whatnot, and sometimes they can be hard to spot amongst the grimy backdrops of each setting. I found myself going in circles a few times to find out I simply overlooked the required item, which was practically staring me right in the face the entire time. I think in total the game has about 4 or 5 different areas, not including the streets, where you spend a good 30 to 40 minutes solving a few of these puzzles before moving on to the next area. Often you're then transported to the other world and have to do another series of puzzles before you can progress, using manual save points that you come across. Now this is all fine and dandy, but the mod has one really big blunder in that it has no enemies whatsoever. Nothing. Nada. Zilch. Now this kind of hurts the game in a really big way. In the original games, you rarely got into combat, but still, having monsters in enclosed areas was really tense, and running from room to room trying to avoid them was nerve-wracking. Or there'd be those times when you'd enter a tiny room and find yourself face to face with an enemy, and you just had to kind of mash the controller in shock trying to get your weapon up. This is the kind of stuff that made the old games so memorable and enjoyable. Our Camilla uses sound design and visuals to great effect, and it is creepy as hell, but ultimately there is no tension or threat, because you know that there's not really any danger of being killed. As it stands, it ends up just being a sort of spooky puzzle simulator with no danger to the player, and it's a bit of a shame. For the first hour or so, I just kept creeping around waiting for something to appear, but alas, it never did. If you're a fan of the Silent Hill games though, this is pretty much a must to check out, and if you're not a fan, then become a fan, play through the original games, then come back and check this mod out. It's clear they've got a lot of love for the Silent Hill games, and this mod feels like a love letter and a bit of a throwback to the way this series used to be. But it's a highly polished love letter with enjoyable puzzles and a somewhat engaging plot. Worth checking out.